Thank you, Heinz. Good afternoon, ladies and gentlemen. Uh, the first challenge that we faced when we were working, when we started working on this report, was that what we call usually the building sector doesn't really exist in the statistics. What we have in the statistics is non-financial business economy, and within the non-financial business economy, we have the construction sector. And the construction sector, sector has actually three subsectors, construction of buildings, specialized construction activities, and civil engineering. In construction of buildings, we have development of building projects and construction of new residential and non-residential uh, buildings. So this is not re related to the renovation of buildings. And then in specialized construction activities, we have different sub-activities that are linked, that could be linked to the renovation or if the renovation happens, so uh, this, uh, these activities uh, would be enhanced. And the building sector that we are used to talk about is basically the sum of two sectors, construction of buildings and specialized construction activities. So the first challenge is to be able to find out what this sector means economically. What you have to keep in mind for the rest of the webinar is that we will focus mainly on specialized construction activities because this is where the renovation work is included. It's not only renovation, but we try to substitute to, to take into account those that are related to the renovation work. And what we see is, is that uh, within the building sector, specialized construction activities uh, have the highest contribution to uh, the EU GDP and the highest contribution to uh, the EU employment. 6% of the EU employment is uh, provided by specialized construction activities. And when we compare this to, for example, the supply of energy to the building sector, supply of energy to the building sector, uh, we see that uh, the value added uh, for the same, the, the, the specialized construction activities create uh, much more employment uh, for uh, the same value added uh, if compared to uh, the supply uh, side. Why did we make this comparison? Because uh, there is, uh, we hear that if we go for a renovation of the building sector, we may lose jobs in the supply of energy to buildings. Uh, in reality, uh, it's, uh, it cannot be the case because the building sector and the renovation work is, uh, requires more, uh, produces more, uh, more employment uh, than uh, supplying of uh, energy. Then uh, uh, the same, we focused again on the spe specialized construction activities, and when we look at uh, the employment situation, the current employment situation uh, in Europe, we see, of course, discrepancies between different member states, and when we compare between specialized construction activities and construction of buildings, we see that countries where uh, the building sector as a whole uh, was mainly focused on construction of new buildings, Spain is a good example uh, for that, uh, has been uh, um, has been more affected by the financial crisis than uh, countries where uh, it was more balanced between socialized construction activities and construction of buildings. And if we consider that we, uh, if we include uh, in the future more energy innovation work, this would mean that specialized construction activities will stabilize the building sector uh, that, uh, um, that may face uh, job losses because we don't need uh, the number of square meters, additional square meters needed in Europe uh, is low compared to the number of square meters to uh, renovate uh, within the 28 uh, member states. Um, and uh, when we look more in detail, who is, uh, who is employing and who is producing this uh, uh, value added in Europe? In the building sector, we see that most of the value added is produced by small and medium enterprises. Look at here the, 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 red, uh, the red bar. You see that in most countries, uh, the small and medium enterprises are the biggest player in the building sector in both construction of buildings and it's more obvious in specialized uh, construction activities. Another parameter that we checked is what does it mean uh, in terms of employment in different regions in Europe? And what we see in these two maps is that the building sector contributes uh, more to employment in the least developed uh, regions in each member state uh, than other sectors. And this is true in almost more 
countries. Uh, what does that mean in terms of renovation? If tomorrow we have renovation plans implemented in all member states, this means that we will boost jobs where they are really needed, where there is a um, lack of uh, jobs and many jobs have been lost. Um, and the, the, we checked the, uh, the, the role of the building sector. Uh, is it only uh, the, the employment role? Is it only in the building itself, or does it go beyond the buildings? And we find out that it goes beyond the building sector because what we usually have in mind as building sector is the, the, reno is the building work itself. But in reality, to be able to do the work, to perform the building work, we need materials. We need um, different support services. Uh, we need different building services like uh, operation, maintenance, and uh, design. And then we, need, we have the building work. And we usually have in mind only what is uh, in red, while the building sector in reality drives uh, the economic activities in all other sectors. And this is not new, uh, because if we look at uh, here just an example from 2010, the contribution of each of these sectors to uh, the output of the building sector, we see that building services and other business services uh, are very high. And the renovation work, if a renovation plan are adopted in different member states, uh, would should uh, drive economic activities in all other sectors, as it was noticed a long time ago. Uh, this is uh, in 1850. Martin Nadeau, who was uh, elected at the French Parliament, had this expression, quand le bâtiment va, tout va, which means that if the building sector works well, uh, uh, all other activities in the country uh, will be driven by the building sector, and this was based on uh, his observation of the activities, the economic activities driven by the building work undertaken at that time for the modernization of France. So we are exactly in similar situation, except that this time we have to renovate our building stock, and it's for the overall uh, Europe. This is about the role that the building sector and the renovation of the energy renovation of the existing building stock could play uh, to, um, uh, to meet uh, the priority one of Juncker's plan. The second priority that the, reno the energy renovation of the building sector uh, could help uh, Europe to meet is the one related, uh, is the third priority in Juncker's plan, and it's the one related to resilient energy union with forward looking climate change. Why is it so important? Because the building sector since 1990 uh, has experienced grow, uh, growth in its energy consumption, mainly on electricity and gas. The electricity part is mainly due to uh, the high penetration of uh, uh, appliances and devices. And uh, the role, the fact that our economy shifted to more services economy, so we have more non-residential buildings used in Europe. Uh, this is why we have this an extreme increase of uh, electricity consumption, but we also had in some countries a shift in uh, heating uh, from um, traditional fuels uh, to electricity. And then when we look more in detail, in, and especially in the residential sector, because the, the consumption, uh, two-thirds of the consumption of the building sector is uh, due to the residential sector, and within the residential sector, the major end-use consuming energy is uh, heating. And when we look at more in detail heating, we see, we see that at the EU level, most of the heating is supplied via gas. And uh, the bad news for Europe is that most of this gas, of course, is imported outside Europe. And you see in the second map, all what is red are the imports from uh, Russia. And uh, you compare this to the blue, uh, blue part of the first map, uh, and you see that some of the countries are uh, uh, heating, some of the countries is highly dependent of uh, the Russian gas. So uh, renovation, energy innovation of the building sector will reduce the heating needs. This means that this, it will reduce the dependency or the vulnerability of the dependency of Europe to external uh, gas. And then the other point that uh, the renovation of the building sector will help uh, in achieving Europe, um, Europe's uh, targets is uh, uh, offering all the citizens and mainly the vulnerable ones uh, 
comfortable uh, houses and um, and making uh, access to comfortable and efficient houses available for everyone. Uh, the first issue that we, we see is that in most um, the, the at the EU level, 70% of the population is owner-occupier of its building or its houses. And this ratio, this figure, is uh, this figure uh, is higher in member states with a per capita GDP lower than the EU average. So you see in the second map, uh, all what is uh, green, uh, dark green, is um, all what is dark green are owner, uh, owners occupiers. So, and this is in member states where uh, GDP per capita is low. So, the the second parameter that we take in, we should take into account in the design of uh, the renovation plans is the fact that in these countries uh, where GDP per capita is lower than the EU average, where the majority of the population is owner occupier, for example, Romania, more than 90 percent, uh, more than 90 percent of the population uh, is owner occupier of their buildings. And the majority of the, these buildings were built between uh, uh, after the Second War and 1980. And this period is known from energy perspective for buildings as the worst one, because after the Second War, it was an emergency situation in Europe. And uh, we didn't have, at that time, uh, building regulations. So we didn't have energy requirements. Uh, on average, at the EU level, we can say that 19, by 1980, we had in almost uh, all the all the EU countries, uh, we had energy requirements for buildings. Uh, what does that mean? It means that during this period, buildings were not well built. So you you have in member states with low GDP per capita population, uh, the highest share of the population owning buildings that are the worst case from energy perspective. And it's not finished because it's in the same countries where we have the highest share of the population uh, uh, not able to keep their homes warm, because, of course, in these countries, as the buildings are not efficient, and unfortunately they are located in cold climate for most of them, uh, so uh, this made the population, uh, put the population in a situation where they cannot, uh, they cannot warm their homes, uh, their homes in uh, winter time. And, of course, it's also in these countries where we have the highest share of the population uh, not able to pay for their utility bills on time. Uh, so we have a combination of at least four parameters plus the climate parameter that makes the situation uh, worse for these uh, countries and for the citizens, the EU citizens um, uh, living there. And that's why the energy renovation of the EU building stock uh, will help at the same time uh, addressing uh, the social uh, situation uh, that we have, that the inefficient building stock creates in member states with low GDP per capita. Uh, and when we look at from climate perspective, it's also in uh, these same countries where we have the highest share of CO2 emission due to the building sector, either the direct ones or the indirect ones when we consider uh, the, um, the supply side. Uh, based on the, all this information that we have uh, collected and we processed, we tried with Chandor to uh, uh, make an estimate of the scale of the challenge. So I leave to Chandor to give you an overview of uh, the final uh, estimate. Uh, 